Sunshine Speedway on Bank Holiday Monday here at Rye House. The Rockets against the Somerset Rebels for already the third time in this young season. One win apiece. The Rockets winning here 37 days ago, 54-37. But the Rebels currently top of the league, Pete, and the Rockets down at the bottom. Brady Kurtz, Charles Wright and uh, Josh Groshenek. And uh, you do wonder if there's any weakness there at all for the Rockets to exploit this afternoon. And there's going to be a little bit of a brotherly contest as well because the Rockets without the injured Steve Boxall and uh, Steve Worrell, I think everybody thinks that's uh, a pretty good replacement. Well, he's in good form, isn't he? Uh, let's hope he continues it here. He's had some good races around here as well. Very fast out the starts. And those are fast way around here. And the Rockets are going to need that, Pete, because uh, no Robin Asprogan. Coming to the line in uh, yellow and black on the inside, 37-year-old Lee Lannan. He coming in to gate number two in the blue helmet colour for the Rockets will be Casper Lugerus and coming in to gate number three in white, Brady Kurtz, the 18-year-old from Gowra, New South Wales. Edward Kennett will be the rider in red on the outside and uh, Toya Brady Kurtz I mean he really has been a revelation hasn't he? Uh, super racer isn't he and uh, he doesn't give up keeps going but today is all about Premier League points and Somerset top end of the table Ryan House looking to claw their way from the bottom end this is heat number one of 15 A little bit of juggling on the start. Had it and Brady Kurtz involved in early action. Again, it goes down. Kurtz goes with him. And Tony Steele's got an instant decision to make. I think it'll be all four back. That shows you just how competitive it's going to be out there. Yeah, very, very hard first term, wasn't it? Can it come across? Brady wasn't giving way to him. And they went in there. All got a bit tangled up there on the inside. Two of them went down. And I think the referee, like you say, Pete, he's going to put all four back in the restart. But uh, interesting. That was a hard first turn. Here we go. Well, this time it's Kennedy who's got the better of the start, but clashes again, leading in. Kennedy gets round over the outside. Casper Luca hugging that inside line, edges his way in the second. Brady Kurt's got the worst of that. He's stuck at the back of the back at the moment with Lee Lana, but this is just what. The doctor ordered as far as the Rockets are concerned. Tough stuff from Kennett on the outside and Gaspar Luka on the inside off the first couple of bends there. Yeah, fantastic start from Kennett, but Gaspar Luka up the inside there, held that line tight. Got Lee Lanham out the way and he flew past them all and he's there in second place and this is a perfect start for the home side. Well, here comes Eddie Kennett looking swift this afternoon already as a look back. He'll be glad to see the blue helmet of his partner, Gaspar Luka, behind him. Lee Lanham in third, Brady and Kurtz making absolutely no ground at the back. Be interesting to see the time on this one. Eddie Kennett comes through. Rockets start off the day with a maximum 5 1 time for the right out Rockets. Well, <laughs> what a sensational start by the home riders there. Uh, Kennett really got across there. He leant hard on Lanham, who was trying to nudge him out. As Lanham moved out, Casper Luca went through. And from that moment on, it was only going to be one result. Super stuff. Well, it'll be interesting to see the time from that one. It certainly looked fast, and it certainly looked very, very exciting. Well, perfect start for the home team in a heat at number one of the uh, 57th meeting between Rye House and Somerset. Certainly pack them in when you consider the first one was only on the 11th of May 2002. Rockets won that, 52 38 and they've uh, generally had the better but uh, not by much 28 wins to the Rebels 25 three draws but it's the Rebels have had the other hand recently winning seven of the last eight meetings between the two sides this is heat number two and on the outside there in yellow and black the only speedway rider born in Tenerife is uh, Benji Compton the 28 year old former Kent King and uh, Scunthorpe Scorpion as well and coming on the inside in the red, the helmet colour is a young man making his home debut here for the Rockets. 21-year-old Daniel Greenwood from Morton on the Marsh. 
who uh, rides for the Coventry Storm in the National League. He'll be partnered in blue by Casper Luca. We've already seen what he can do in heat number one when he got that paid win behind his skipper, Edward Kennett. And uh, making up the lineup in the white helmet colour will be Paul Stark, who, uh, of course, appeared here as a Ryan House Rocket back in 2010 making uh, nine appearances. Impressive stuff for a Casper Luca, and, uh, you know, that knee brace, um, obviously, he's taken to it very nicely, by the look of it. Yeah, and he uh, purchased this himself. He knew what he wanted. He went out and bought it and got it, and he's fitted it on himself, and he says it's working well. He doesn't feel the pain when he's racing. Um, I think when he's behind Edward Kennett up front, he feels a lot of uh, joy and everything else because he had a super race last time out. Can he make it two out of two? The Rockets will certainly be hoping so. Rebels hitting back, very fast start by Paul Stark with Benji Compton coming round the outside. Greenwood struggling at the back at the moment and Casper Luca back in third place. But oh, Benji Compton takes a heavy tumble on the fourth bend. He's not going to get up from that. Let's hope he's OK. Race right. is going to be stopped. That was a in. nasty one, Pete. Head first, he hit that track and the bike come down on top of him as well as he spun out. It's quite a nasty one. Yeah, it's called a few people out so far this season coming around that fourth bend. Just uh, just a little bit too much throttle. And I uh, can see uh, a couple of Somerset riders going over there to check. The skipper, Josh Groschenek, with a five on his back. And uh, we can see he was uh, sitting up when he put him in the ambulance. Looks like a problem with uh, a leg injury. So uh, hopefully it's not as bad as it appears. And we wish uh, Benji a very speedy recovery. Uh, <laughs> Well, the restart of heat number two after a lengthy delay here. Benji Compton, unfortunately, broke his nose and is suffering from concussion. So uh, won't be seeing him again in the meeting and wish him, as we were saying, a speedy recovery, which leads Paul Stark in the white helmet colour there. The lone Somerset rebel on the line with on the inside in the red helmet colour, Daniel Greenwood and outside him in blue Casper Luca and uh, Paul Stark well he will be hoping to uh, do what he did about 20 minutes ago when he made a very sharp start yeah he did make a super start and he had his teammate there with him as well unfortunately he won't have that uh, this time but his Dan Greenwood gets another chance off the inside got a feel of the track now and of course Casper off of gate number three will have no one on the outside of him so he may be able to get into that first turn as well but uh, it's going to be another interesting one, Pete. It has been a lengthy delay. The track has been rewatered a few times. So uh, let's see how the action goes. Right, there you go. Stark made another good start. Hits the front of the pack. Away from Greenwood. Casper Lucas right there with him this time, though. And Casper's got plenty of speed about him. We saw that in heat number one. Casper Luca trying to go around the outside of Paul Stark. Right up his exhaust pipe. Good action between these two in heat number two. Luca's going to go up the inside here and judges it absolutely perfectly. Super pass there by Luca, wasn't it? Stark was almost looking for him. Shut him out first time, but a perfect switch back. Through on the inside. The Rockets now on a 4-2. And Greenwood not that far behind either. Well, Casper Luke has been given a wild card by the Danish Federation into the European Under-21 Championships, and that was a good example why. He's pulled out a big lead now over Paul Stark. Dan Greenwood is going to score his first home point as a right house rocket in the red helmet colour, but no doubt about the win. Casper Luka takes that in heat number two. Paul Stark shakes his head as he comes across the line. A point for Dan Greenwood, 4-2 for the Rockets. Well, Luca certainly made up a lot of ground on Paul Stark there. And uh, once he got past him, there was no stopping him. And he won that one very, very comfortable. 4-2, 9-3 the scores after the opening two heats. Early advantage for the Rockets then, nine points to three. And this is heat number three. And over on the far side in the red helmet colour, well, Ryan House fans will be glad of the news that Anders Melgren had declared himself fit to take his place 
in the side this afternoon, having had a nasty spill against the Rebels, of course, when he was guesting for the Sheffield Tigers. But he's here on the outside in heat number three. And just coming round the two Somerset Rebels in uh, yellow and black, Charles Wright. And in white is Richie Worrell. And that's going to set up a real brotherly battle because coming out of uh, gate number two alongside his brother will be Steve Worrell. So I do wonder if these two reckon they'd be racing against each other today. Probably not. Steve Worrell got the call to stand in for the injured Steve Boxall. And, uh, well... No brotherly love, you would guess, out of gates number one and two. Yeah, it's funny, actually. I mean, we asked Stephen, or rather Richie, that question in the before the meeting here, and he turned around and he said, oh, you know, I want him to win every race he's in, unless it's against me. He said, in the old days, it would have been, I'm not going to lose to him. He said, but we don't look at it that way now. We both support each other and help each other out. So uh, nice touch there, but I'm sure once those tapes rise, uh, they'll be going for it. Oh, and it's Belgrin, just getting a little bit of advice by the pit gate when he comes back in the red helmet colour. He tweeted this morning he wasn't too happy that his mechanic was playing opera on the way here, so I don't know whether that's inspired him or not. I suppose that uh, we'll see. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I wonder what one it was. I mean, uh, could he be the phantom out there? We never know, do you? Man behind the mask. So on the inside, uh, it's a meeting of the Worrells. Richie Worrell on the inside for Somerset. Stephen Worrell, the guest for the Raya House Rockets. Coming out of uh, gate number three, Charles Wright will be uh, taking part in the GB semi-final in the 20th of this month at Kings Lynn. And on the outside, in red is Anders Belger, and this is heat number three. Right, Steve Worrell who's outgated his brother. Anders Belger and stuck in the back, but Steve Worrell looking good as Charles Wright slots in to second place. Anders Belger in the back of the back of the moment. Charles Wright getting a little bit out of shape. And Steve Worrell looking good out front. Anders Belger close enough to challenge the two rebels in front of him. But at uh, the moment, well, Steve Worrell's winning the battle of the brothers. Yes, yeah, certainly has made a super start, didn't he? Melgren got squeezed out, but he's not that far behind them. Probably feeling his way back after that spill last week. But you get the feeling if he can get past one, he could get past both. And there's Anders Belgren having a look up the inside of Charles Wright. That's going to be interesting on the last lap. Belgren still having a little nip away on Wright. He squeezed in front of his opponent. Anders Belgren goes in the third. Can he keep it going as Wright comes back up the inside of him? Yes, he can. Steve Worrell's going to take the win here in the red helmet colour. Belgren's made the mistake. Charles Wright coming through into third place and with Richie Worrell in second our first share the heat of the afternoon yeah the slip by Melgren on the last turn there you saw him going wide go into that corner the same way that Wright did earlier and Compton did in the last race but no doubt about the man in front Steve Worrell pillar the post victory and the Rockets maintaining that six point advantage So heat number four is upon us with the Rockets holding on to that six-point advantage after the first shared heat of the afternoon. And they have on the track on the far side in the red helmet colour, Nikolai Bus Jacobson, who's back in the uh, right house lineup, missed the defeat against Sheffield, of course, because he was uh, riding in the uh, Danish under 21 European and World Qualifier where he finished second behind Mikhail Beck. A very tidy performance by Nikolai that was. Takes him through to the next stage of the competition. And certainly he's a young man that uh, the Rockets missed greatly on that uh, day against Sheffield. And they'll hope he's in good form so far this afternoon as uh, both riders getting a little bit of attention down by the uh, pit gate. And certainly the rocker did miss Nikolai on that occasion. Oh, absolutely. I always said to you at the time, you know, if you're using rider replacement, the others have to be on song. Unfortunately, they weren't, and they paid the penalty. But you could take nothing away from Sheffield that day, Pete. They really rode as a team, and it was just a shame that meeting was marred by that horrible spill at the end of it. Uh, but it's another day. Days go on. The racing goes on. 
And at the moment, it's the Rockets in control. Well, on the inside in the uh, yellow and black helmet colour will be uh, Paul Stark, who's in for a busy afternoon, with Benji Compton being uh, ruled out, unfortunately, of the action. Gasper Lucas unbeaten so far, coming out again number two in blue. And then we see Josh Karasharnek, so often an honorary rocket on occasions, the 25-year-old and uh, Nikolai Jakobsen on the outside in the red helmet colour and Josh Karasharnek, he's just one of those riders, wouldn't he? If, if you were a promoter, you had a fantasy speedway team, you'd think, yep, I'm going to put him on the team sheet. Absolutely, and he's going to be a busy lad today because he's riding for Wolverhampton tonight, so he's got to get from here to Monmore Green for a 7.30 start up there. That might not be so easy, we will see. Away they go, Jakobsen's made a good one from the outside, Paul Sharp, pretty sharp in the yellow and black helmet colour, but Nikolai Jakobsen again judges it perfectly and goes into the lead. MBJ, as he's known around these parts, as Grishanek comes outside of Kasper Luka and battling a little bit with his own teammate Paul Stark there, which gives Jakobsen a further advantage. Kasper Luka stuck at the back at the moment, but uh, we know he will chase and chase, but uh, well... Normal service from MBJ out front. Yeah, super start from Jakobsen right round the outside. The real race going on at the back now with Stark coming under pressure from Kasper Luka there. But it looks like he may just hang on to it. Groshenik in second place looking like he's got that one comfortable. But the race is at the back. Well, Nikolai Jakobsen leads. Josh Groshenik. Jakobsen comes around the final two bends. Kasper Luka's having a real go against Paul Stark. It's not going to get there though. Grishanek comes through in second, Stark holds on for third and we're in for another shared heat which maintains that six point advantage for the Rockets. Yeah, good win there for the main Dane, wasn't it? Pillar of the post, spectacular style as ever and like you said, that's what was missing last time. Riders out for uh, heat at number five then. Anders Melgren on the inside in the red helmet colour for the Rockets. He'll be joined off gate number two in yellow and black by uh, Lee Lanham. Steve Worrell will go for the Rockets in blue up at gate number three. And on the outside in white is uh, Brady Hertz. And uh, just early gate statistics, two wins off of four, one off of three and one off of two. And uh, for so many years, the inside gate was the favoured one here at Raya House, but uh, for the last few seasons, it's been very much the outside gates which have been more profitable. Yeah, I guess a little bit of banking on the turn. In the, you know, the riders, they wind it on, get out there, get the speed on, and they've got enough to pace them south right round the outside. And I'm expecting Brady Kurtz to do that in this one here. But, uh, well, you know, Melgren and uh, Worrell, they can do the business. They've done it before. Uh, Melgren off the inside, looked like he was feeling his way back last time. And he's got Lee Lanham there next to him, the old campaigner, wily old campaigner, who's quite capable of popping out the start himself. So Anders Melgren on the inside, Lee Lanham out of uh, gate number two. Stevie Worrell, who looked very sharp first time out out of gate number three. And uh, Brady Kurtz, who uh, had that battle with Edward Kennett in uh, eight number one. Yet to really show us what he's all about. But uh, early dates, Rockets lead 15-9 over only at heat number five of the action here in the Premier League. Oh, that's a little stuck up. But uh, by Lee Lanham and it's Anders Melgren and Brady Kurtz involved. Kurtz goes around the outside of Melgren. Steve Worrell this time cutting up the inside of Lee Lanham into third place. But Brady Kurtz took major advantage. And he's the one who's out in front in that white helmet colour. Anders Melgren doing the chasing. Worrell setting into third. And uh, Lee Lanham, the man who had that little nibble at the beginning, is stuck at the back of the pile. And Brady Kurtz is going to be difficult to reel in from here. Yeah, good start from Kurtz, wasn't it, round the outside. No doubt Lanham was Lee moving there, and I'm surprised the referee didn't pull it back because he wasn't last at the time. But he's at the back now, Worrell found a way through, and he was the one who was, uh, had the misfortune of actually staying still at the start. But no doubt about the guy in front. 
Well, going for our third chair eight of the afternoon as Brady Kurtz becomes Somerset's first heat winner in the white helmet colour in front of Anders Belgren and Stephen Worrell. So once again, you can't separate the two sides. Three points apiece in that one, but the Rockets still lead it by six. Well, Pete, you said, didn't you? We haven't seen what Brady Kurtz is made of yet. We just saw it there, four dynamic laps, super stuff. So here we are at heat number six. Riders coming round after a little bit of work on the track. In the white helmet colour there is the Somerset skipper, Josh Groshanek. Next to him in red, very impressive winner of heat number one was Edward Kennett, seems a long time ago that now. And Paul Stark, who we said is going to have a busy afternoon out there in yellow and black, off of gate number three. And on the outside in blue, also impressive winner first time out was uh, Nikolai Jakobsen. So uh, Rocket certainly got a bit of firepower out there, but uh, they've got Josh Krishanek to, uh, to bargain with. This could be a really interesting first turn. Groshanek on the inside there. And Paul Stark very fast off the blocks in his opening two rides here. Kennett had to work hard first time out. Jakobsen flew around the outside. He'll be looking to do that again, but this could be a very, very tight first and second turn. So the Rockets that uh, put together the heat win so far this afternoon. That was what cost them a lot against Sheffield in their last home meeting. Couldn't win the heats. Well, they've certainly done that. They've won four out of five so far. And on the inside, Josh Grishanek will be looking to become the first rider to pick up a victory from gate number one. Right, they go. Good start by Kenneth, but Grishanek is right there with him. Jakobsen with them as well, but it's Kenneth who's got the base and goes outside the Australian. Jakobsen in third, but uh, we will know he won't want to stay there. Makes the mistake, though, and uh, almost falls behind ball starts. Got enough momentum to carry him back into third place and uh, Eddie Kennett is looking very smooth out top. Yeah, Kennett made a super start there, shook off Jakob oh, Jakobsen and uh, Groshenek very early on there. Groshenek now in second place. Jakobsen's going to have to settle third. The track is very slick, very dusty and I think passing is going to be very, very limited for the rest of this match. But no doubt about the man in front, Edward Kennett. Eddie Kennett. Leading Josh Grishanek then with uh, NBJ back in third place. Rockets are going to extend their lead here. Two out of two for Kenny in the red helmet colour. Grishanek comes through in second. Jakobsen picks up the points and the lead extends itself to eight points with six heats gone in. Yeah, early days, eight points up. They'd be happy with that. Of course, they don't want to get ten up too early because that black and white could come into play. Be nice if they could go 10 up after heat 11 when they can't use the black and white. But at the moment, it's all about this guy, Edward Kennett. Pillar to post victory, second time this afternoon. Bank holiday crowd enjoying the action here at the Hoddesdon Raceway. And uh, then have enjoyed the first six heats as well. Rockets leading this one by eight points over the Somerset Rebels. But uh, here... In a heat number seven, coming through on the inside, Nikolai Jakobsen in the red helmet colour. Next to him in white, Richie Worrell for the Rebels, coming out again number three. Now second chance to see Daniel Greenwood on his own debut. And on the outside in yellow and black is Charles Wright. So uh, with that eight point lead, I think you said to John Sanford, you'll be eight points in front coming in heat number seven. He would have liked that very much. Yeah, absolutely, and of course, uh, it only takes one race to halve it, and uh, I think the Rebels have got a really strong pair out here, and um, right off the outside, he would like that blast around the outside. Jakobsen's going to have to make one of his jet-propelled starts off that inside, which hasn't been so favourable lately. And uh, Greenwood still feeling the pace, but uh, capable of getting a point if he can get out front. He could certainly uh, spoil the party on the first turn. This then is heat number seven of 15 Premier League points at stake on oh, a big afternoon at Raya House. Thought of just getting them in line. Here we go. Yeah, 
back of the made a good start. Charles Wright, really lively from the outside as well. Richie Worrell tries to cut up the inside of Nikolai Jakobsen. Can't get there. Jakobsen in front. Worrell chasing him down. Charles Wright in third. Daniel Greenwood stuck on the back of the pile at the moment. And Nikolai Jakobsen winding it on with that familiar style that we're growing used to here in East Hertfordshire. Jakobsen pulls himself out a little bit more lead in front of Richie Worrell. And uh, this is what we like to see. Well, I said he'd got to move them out on the first turn. It's exactly what he'd done off that inside gate. Moved them all out wide, blasted out into the dirt, and he's home and dry as long as that motorcycle keeps going. Greenwood not that far off the pace, but it doesn't look like he's going to get any points out of this one. Here comes MBJ with two bends to negotiate then for his second win of the afternoon. The main Dane looks behind him. Can even coast down across the line. He takes the win in front of Richie Worrell and Charles Wright. We're back to those shared heat, but the Rockets are still leading it by eight as Jakobsen punches the air going down the back straight. That was a good win from Jakobsen, wasn't it? Moved them all over very early on, and uh, once he got his nose in front, there was only going to be one winner. And he's certainly becoming a fan's favourite here at Hoddesdon. The main dame is back. Nick. Halfway stage then, eight, number eight, a couple of uh, swift times so far this afternoon, but Edward Kennett's got the best so far in eight, number six, 56.5, second fastest around the Hoddesdon circuit this season. They're here coming to the inside though, and the blue helmet colour is Casper Luca for the Rockets. Next to him is Paul Stark taking his fourth ride of the afternoon, and as Melgren comes out of gate number three in the red helmet colour, and on the outside in white is uh, Lee Lanham. And so good to see Anders Melgren out there because when we heard he'd had that bang at Somerset and landed on his troubled back, it's uh, good to see him back in action. Yeah, back very quick. Would have missed the uh, match at Glasgow, which uh, John Sanford, I understand, done a massive rain dance with Len Silver. And uh, they won the day there. The Feathers obviously done the trick there. But uh, always good to see Anders out on a bike. And let's hope that he can get back to the form he was showing before that spill on Friday night. Casper on the inside, he's going to have to make a good start here. The uh, Rebels got an interesting pair, Lanham hasn't really shone, but again, if he gets out in front, he's very, very awkward to pass. Lee Lanham on the outside then. Well, we've had three uh, heat winners so far. They go, Lanham and Belgrin locked together. Belgrin's made a decent start, so has Paul Stark. He's made a good gate in every one of his four appearances. Hasn't normally carried it forward, though, as far as the Rebels are concerned. This time it's Casper Luca who's playing catch up at the back of the field, but the eight trains rolling out front with Lee Lanham doing the chasing as Luca comes outside of Paul Stark. Put Rockets into 4 2 territory. Casper Luca's got the bit between his teeth here, will hunt down Lee Lanham who's chasing Anders Melgrim, and look at Casper go here. Yeah, Casper's chasing very, very hard. The track very dry, very dusty. Visibility must be awkward for the riders. Clear for Melgrim, the A-train out in front looking good, but the race is for second place, and Casper Lecker absolutely busting a gut, and there's a chance up the inside, and through he goes. And brilliant stuff from Casper Lecker. Inside of Lee Ladham, five on time for the Rockets. Big cheer from the terrace. The eight three takes the three. Two and a bonus for Casper Luca. The Rockets lead stretches. And I tell you what, if Anders rides like that every time after he's been listening to opera in the van, we'll know what will be blasting out before next Saturday. Oh, absolutely. But what about that race for second place? Casper Luca coming through. It does, of course, put the Rebels in black and white territory. But they've got to do it from 12 behind rather than 10, but that was a super second place. So some thinking for Somerset team manager Gary May to make, and that thinking has resulted in the black and white helmet being dusted off and put in the custody of the skipper Josh Kroshanek, who comes to the line here in gate number two on the inside of him in blue. A very capable guest he's proved so far for the injured Steve Boxall is Stephen Worrell and they'll be joined on the line 
by the winner of the last one, Heat 8, Anders Malgren. And uh, Paul Stark is coming out for yet another ride. And, uh, well, you've got to wonder, isn't it? It's got to feel a little bit for Paul Stark because uh, certainly uh, you may expect to have seven rides in a meeting, but uh, not quite the way that Paul Stark's having them with uh, Benji Compton being out of uh, the competition right from heat number two. Yeah, very difficult, isn't it? Seven rides, like you say, it does mean when you're down to six, the other six have got to be on song as well. And uh, Starkey, I would have said, was the better of the two reserves, but Compton was doing very well before that spill in heat number two. But black and white here off of gates two and four. The Rebels could well get something out of it. Worrell's going to have to make a good start on the inside. And Melgren is going to have to ride like he did last time when he stormed to a superb victory. But this is a tough one to call. The Rebels need some points. The Rockets need to prevent them. Well, I think it would have got good money on them reaching heat number nine as we are here. And Somerset only putting one eight win on the board. Absolutely, right. Pete. And, and they're... You know, they've had some good results. They've been hammering people. And uh, they've gone to Sheffield and won. And uh, they've fancied their chances here today. Here we go then. Heat number nine. Josh Grishanek going for double points. Well, let's go. Warren's made a good one from the inside. Grishanek's going to have work to do as he tries to go around the outside of the man from St. Helens and can't do it. Stevie Worrell hits the front, Anders Belgren settles in the third place, Paul Stark's out of the race, and it's going to be Josh Grishanek chasing the Rockets guest, Stevie Worrell. Grishanek looks up the inside of Worrell, going to be a good scrap between the pair of them here. The Australian tries for the big burst around the outside as Worrell got the pace to block him off. Wheel to wheel, the pair of them. Rashadak still going around that outside line, and still Worrell hangs on well, off the inside. This is terrific stuff from Stevie Worrell. What a race from Worrell here. Groshanek absolutely busting a gut inside, outside. He couldn't have gone any wider. He's trying to cut back here, but Worrell is riding a superb line. Stevie Worrell's got two more beds. Here he comes. Rashadak's not going to make it. Big cheer from the terrace for Stevie Worrell. Who said guests don't care? Stevie Worrell takes the three in front of Josh Krasharnik. Anders Melgren settles in in third place. And what a big bonus for the Rockets this man's been. Well, we did say beforehand that we thought if you were going to pick a guest for Steve Boxall, this was the guy on form. And he's going to get a big cheer from the crowd. And so he should. That was superb. So here we go with heat number 10 and uh, well the Rebel Army who've had things uh, all their own way here last year. A little bit quiet at the moment, it's the Raya House fans that are enjoying this one with their team leading 34-22 and with eight heat wins out of nine heat so far. This is heat number 10, brings to the line in the yellow and black helmet colour there, Charles Wright and he'll be partnered in white by Richie Worrell. And for the Rockets, well, Eddie Gennett's had two impressive wins so far and set the fastest time of the afternoon at 56.5. And his partner coming around on the inside, well, he's going to be an honorary Rocket without a doubt after that last ride. Steve Worrell, so uh, Steve on the inside, Richie on the outside, twins meets part two. Yeah, this could be another interesting one. Worrell had a superb ride last time out, and uh, what a great choice of guest he has been. And uh, Kennett in fine form here. You'd expect the Rockets to go on and get victory now, Pete, but uh, we said that against Peterborough, didn't we? Yeah, don't mention that. <laughs> <laughs> yes, it doesn't look like we'll get a last heat this idea, here, but you never know. Still got six races to go. Anything can happen. And we know that Somerset are a very resilient team and have the kind of success they've had over the past couple of years without producing the occasional rabbit out of a hat. On the inside then, Steve Worrell. And yellow and black, Charles right next to him. Eddie and he comes out of gate three in red. And on the outside in white is Richie Worrell. Right, there you go, Steve Worrell's made another one, Kennedy involved in a real sandwich there, manages to shrug aside Richie Worrell and Rockets on 5-1 territory here. Charles Wright and Richie Worrell tried to make things difficult for Eddie Gennett, 
But Eddie Kay was in no mood to accept that. Straight through the bear of them and out front. Stevie Worrell doing the business again. And wow, it just gets better and better as far as the Rockets are concerned. Well, what a start from Worrell there. Really did move them out. Kennick done well to hang on there because it really did get very, very tight. But he's well there in second place. And surely this 5-1 here will put the match to bed because Worrell is out in front by a mile. Kennick happily tucked in behind him. The Rockets on a 5-1 and the Rebels in turmoil. Stevie Worrell looking to make it three wins in four rides for him. What a guest he's proved this afternoon. Big cheer as Rockets in 5-1 territory again with Eddie Kennick keeping his unbeaten record in second place. Charles Wright coming through in third. Another big 5-1 for the home side and well they've turned the Premier League table on its head this afternoon. Well terrific ride from Worrell if he's going to do that and we can use him as a guest I might go and twist poor old Stevie Boxall's arm for him because that was superb and what a choice of guest and uh, incidentally let's hope it's not too long before we see Steve Boxall back on his motorbike but for now it's all about the restart rockets. Heat 11 then, and well, a lot of the crowd out there didn't believe that they'd be in this position and enjoying this one with a smile. Some might have gone in, there's been shining on the rocket so far this afternoon and here they'll look to inflict a little bit more damage on the visiting Somerset Rebels, but on the inside there'll be a man who'll be determined for that not to happen. Brady Kurtz is Somerset's only heat winner of the afternoon so far. Next to him, Nikolai Bus Jacobson in the red helmet colour. Coming out of gate number three in yellow and black is uh, Lee Lanham. And on the outside in blue is uh, Daniel Greenwood. And Lee Lanham, boy, so reliable around this track. Not had the best of afternoon so far. No, I don't think the Rebels have had the best of afternoon so far, but are you taking that away from the Rockets? Because they really have ridden quite superb against the odds in all honesty Pete we thought this was going to be very tough and we were saying if you can get a point out of it we do well but at the moment they're on course for all three and uh, Rebels will be scratching their head Gary May ain't got a lot of hair anyway but he won't have much left after this one the Rockets have been superb well it's been a funny old season so far we're only into the beginning of May Rockets started like a train didn't they with those League Cup victories it then all went in the opposite direction but uh, they have shown this afternoon if they get a full strength side out there they're going to be a match for anybody around this circuit so Brady Kurtz on the inside Nikolai Bush Jacobson next to him Lee Lanham and on the outside Daniel Greenwood oh Kurtz surely a little bit of a flyer there Tony Steele spots it as the Australian moved just a little too soon and all four coming back to the start. Well spotted, Tony Steele. Yes, yeah, very slight movement, wasn't it? Uh, almost a perfect start. If he hadn't have gone back that uh, fraction, I think he would have probably got away with it. But it's all four riders. Three of them are going to come straight back to the line. It looks like it's Lee Lanham who's gone uh, AWOL. But uh, the Rockets get another bite. Oh, Brady Kurtz knows that he's going to have to produce something special from that inside because... Uh, Nikolai Bus Jacobson is going to be chasing me all the way as uh, Lee Lanham just goes walk about for a little and then comes back. He'll slot into uh, gate number three in uh, yellow and back. And uh, Daniel Greenwood, well, it's been a little bit of a difficult afternoon for him, but uh, you know he'll settle in and uh, certainly if he shows the kind of form he's been showing in the National League, he'll be a good acquisition here. Yeah, absolutely. You know, he's a, a young lad. Uh one of the top riders in the National League, but there is a big jump between the National and the Premier, probably bigger than it's ever been at the moment. And, uh, well, we'll see what he can do. It, Like you say, it's a learning curve. He get another few laps in the second half of the meeting when uh, the Raiders take on Eastbourne, and, of course, he'll be guesting for them. There they go, Kurtz has made it this time in front of Jakobson who cut up the inside. The Australian's got plenty of bait about him and oh, where did Lee Lanham come from? He goes in the second and finally the Rebels start to fight back. Brady Kurtz leads the way, Lanham in second. 
Jakobsen all over Lee Lanham in the red helmet colour. Jakobsen's going to have a look up the inside. Has he got the pace? Not quite. As Lanham shuts the door on him going round turn three. Brady Gertz is away and gone. And the race is going to be for second there. Yeah, Jakobsen going right out, trying to find some drive out there. The track as slick as anything. Lanham in second place. Well, he's a cagey old guy. He will hug that line. There won't be no room on the inside. And at the moment, he's hanging on to second place quite comfortable. And the Rebels on a 5-1 here. Brady Gertz coming around for his second win of the afternoon. And Summit's that second win of the afternoon. And their first maximum as Lanham holds off Nikolai Jakobsen. Too little, too late. Well, it remains to be seen, but Somerset cut four points off that lead. Yeah, back down to 12, and a few races still to go. Never say never. Here we go with the hit number 12 then, and 12 points the difference between the two teams off to Somerset. Hit back in a heat 11, bringing the Rebel Army something to cheer with only their second heat win and their first 5-1 of the competition. On the inside in yellow and black here for them is Paul Stark. Anders Melgren in red next to him. Coming out again, number three in white is Richie Worrell. And then on the outside in blue, we haven't seen Gaspar Luca for a little bit, but uh, certainly had a fine afternoon so far. One win and two paid wins for the young Danish star. And uh, Richie Worrell, well, he's just... It's not been his afternoon, but it's got to be said, the last few times he's been here, it hasn't been his afternoon. Yeah, he said earlier he loves the place, he likes coming here, and he just don't know why he can't get to grips with it. Uh, you know, he says it's him and not his machine, he's not making any excuses. He said one of his biggest problems is because uh, he's lost his elite league place, he's only racing five minutes a week. I guess that's just home matches he's uh, including there. But is isn't a lot of time, is it? He's looking for foreign outlets, hence the trip to Austria. But uh, he is a classy performer. When he gets in front, he can be very fast. Right, there you go. Cole Stark made the customary good one, but Anders Melgren cuts up the inside, but here comes Richie Worrell. And Somerset on 5-1 territory again. And could we be in for a dramatic ending after all as Casper Luca is the man doing the chasing of Worrell and Paul Stark. Luca will be all over him like a rash as Anders Melgren struggles to get back into contact at the back of the field. But certainly not too much grip out there and it's Paul Stark who's worked so hard this afternoon who could be dragging Somerset right back into this contest. Stark leads the way from Richie Worrell and Casper's got work to do. Yeah, certainly has. Super start from uh, Stark there. Worrell done well to switch back past Melbourne, who got squeezed out. Casper's chasing hard, but there is just no grip whatsoever. And the Rebels on a 5-1. And all of a sudden, the panic button is beginning to be pushed here. The Rockets so nearly home, but the Rebels making sure they are going to try and get something out of it. It's down to just eight points now, Pete. The second 5-1 in a row. And the Rebels are rampant. It's going to be shaky in those pits, isn't it, as we approach heat number 13. But Paul Stark's worked hard for that win. And Richie Worrell showing exactly what he can do in second place. Well, certainly didn't see this coming. Three heats remaining. And Rebels right back in touch here. As they appear come out for heat number 13. And it puts on the line in the white helmet colour for them. Brady Gertz, two wins to his name so far in his three rides. And on uh, the outside in yellow and black is the skipper, Josh Groshanek. And we always know what you're going to get from him. But up against them, well, now is the time for Eddie Gennett to step forward and just steady the ship a little bit. Unbeaten so far in his three rides. He'll come out of the inside gate in the red helmet colour. And his partner in blue, Nikolai Jakobsen and well four of the finest the Premier League have to offer on the line here absolutely I think this is probably the uh, best four riders you could probably get in the Premier League at one stage uh, barring of course the unfortunate Simon Stead but uh, this is well how do you call this one a 5-1 here to the Rebels would really upset the apple cart with two races to go 
The Rockets could steady the ship if they can get a heat advantage out of it. But, uh, well, I really wouldn't want to call it. Kurtz has looked superb last time. And Groshenik, you know he will just chase for the whole four laps, whatever happens. It's going to be a humdinger. It's going to be a real cracker, isn't it? Eddie Gennett just taking his time. Brady Kurtz having a look down. And Nikolai Jakobsen in the blue helmet colour. Well, that's the kind of race he's come across to this country for. He always said, well, it's OK riding in uh, Denmark and it's OK riding in Poland, but uh, I'm going to get far more rides in the Premier League here and that's the only way I'm going to improve. Well, it's only an eight slide this as well against the top the Premier League has to offer. But he's going to show his real metal. So here we go, eight number 13. Oh, that's a little nibble by Brady Kurt, but it's Kennedy who's made the start. Jakobsen up the inside. Rockets on 5 1 territory for a moment, but oh, Jakobsen goes back almost to the back of the pack as he's fighting away with Grishan Eggman out front. Is Eddie Kennedy? And here comes Jakobsen going round the outside of Brady Kurt. Look at Jakobsen go! Oh, special stuff from MBJ. Rockets on 5 1. That was magic. Unbelievable, wasn't it? Kennett was away. One minute, Groshenek was shoving Jakobsen right up the exhaust pipe, and the next minute, he shook him off, and he's gone past Kurtz as if he'd lost a chain up on the top turn, and this will be the uh, nerves jangling away here, but it will be the end of the match, surely now. Kennett in front, Jakobsen in second place, a 5-1. It's going to be a 12-point lead, and the crowd are going to go wild. Eddie Gennett takes the chequered flag in front of Nikolai Bosjakobsen. Crisis, what crisis? Rockets slam over 5-1. Surely the Rebels revival has been put to bed by that one. Oh, what a terrific display by these two. Gennett remains unbeaten. And super stuff from Nikolai Jakobsen to pick up the paid win in second. Well, unbelievable. The difference is back to 12. The Rockets are going to win by whatever. And now the Rebels are going to have to try and get a solitary point. An ultimate race then, 8-14 that finds on the line in the white helmet colour, Charles Wright. And he'll be joined by uh, Paul Stark taking his seventh ride of the afternoon. And then coming round in the red helmet colour, real hero for uh, one for one afternoon only for his adopted team here. Stevie Worrell really has proved an excellent choice of guests for the injured Steve Boxall. And uh, Daniel Greenwood is the other rider due out online in the blue helmet colour. And well, just getting their breath back from a heat 13. And well, if there was any doubt, surely there isn't any now. No, it's uh, closed off now, isn't it? 12 points, two races to go. Even two five nils there, the Rockets would still win. Obviously, we don't want that to happen. But we're saying, Pete, you know, what a topsy-turvy season. This uh, one started here today, and we're thinking, oh, my God, Somerset, they've come here at the right time. The Rockets got all sorts of problems. But Rye House have ridden above themselves once again to uh, send the visitors home packing. And changed by uh, John Sanford here. Gaspar Luka comes out for a reserve ride in place of Daniel Greenwood. And Casper certainly has played his part in uh, what has been a considerable rocket success story. Somerset came here in third place in the Premier League table, two meetings, two wins, and they absolutely tanked Sheffield 63-29 in their last appearance. And the Sheffield side, of course, who won here in their first, in Raya House's first Premier League outing. So uh, certainly a topsy-turvy start to the season, but this is going to send just a little bit of a message out to the rest of the Premier League that if you think it's going to be easy coming down there against this right outside, then think again. Kasper Luka just having a few adjustments to his helmet and his neck brace there. But, uh, certainly Kasper can be proud of his efforts and, uh, well, Steve Worrell, we've said it, what a choice of guest. I think uh, John Sanford, Len Silver and everyone else can be very proud of the way the Rockets have been here today. They've been quite outstanding.
Away they go. Light start from Carl Brighton on the inside. Lucas there, though, he's going to hunt that wide line. Paul Stark comes around the outside of him, and Wright goes around the outside of Paul Stark. And it's the rock hits here that are trailing, but uh, too little, too late as far as Somerset are concerned for a result. But they could still get a race point. Charles, Paul Stark's looking down on that machine as Steve Worrell gets himself back in a contest. And Paul Stark had good right to look down on that machine, but it's given up the ghost. Seventh ride, one too many for Paul Stark, but uh, Rocket's going to have to go something against Charles right here. Yeah, very much so. Unlucky there for uh, Starkey, wasn't it? Uh, looked comfortable for that five one there, having found his way through to second place. Wright's got this one in the bag, but the Rockets won't mind. They've got the minor positions, and they are going to collect three points here today. And here comes Charles Wright to take the win for the Somerset Rebels. Rocket Square, they eat through Casper Luca and Stevie Worrell. And Somerset are not going to go away from here, you would think, with a race point for their efforts. It's been a great afternoon for the Rockets. Charles Wright worked hard, and that's his first win of the afternoon. Yeah, a little bit too much, uh, too little, too late for the visitors, isn't it, to be fair to them? But uh, then you, uh, like I said earlier, would be taking a lot away from Rye House, who really have deserved it today. They've uh, ridden very, very hard, very, very fair, as, as have the Rebels. They've ridden fair as well. But it's a well-deserved home victory. Here we go with the final eight of the Premier League action here. Uh, the majority of the fans at the Odyssey Raceway have enjoyed this one greatly on the inside in the white helmet colour here for the Somerset Rebels is Brady Kurtz. Next to him in red, what a ride he had in 8.13. Nikolai Bush Jakobsen in yellow and black. Coming out again, number three is Richie Worrell and uh, just coming round in the blue helmet colour. Well, I think it's probably fitting that we have the meeting of the Twins Park 3 because Stephen Worrell has played such an integral part on what is a notable Rockets victory against the team. We've got to emphasise it again, who were third in the Premier League table at the start of play this afternoon. And uh, just signifies, as we were saying, get all these Rockets fit, get them on their own track, and nobody's going to fancy coming here. Absolutely, and uh, yeah, full credit to Stephen Worrell. What a fantastic job he's done, and uh, rightly so. He's out uh, in this race, he deserves it. Uh, surprised Kennett's uh, not come out, he's settling on his maximum. And uh, Bush Jakobsen, well, we know what he can do. But Brady Kurtz on the inside. This could be another cracker. We started off with some top speedway, Pete. Looks like we're going to finish with it too. Oh, Brady Kurtz, well, just nibbled away at the beginning there. Tony Steele hasn't called it. And uh, Rebels go into a 5-1 position as Richie Worrell nips through in the second place. Stephen Worrell at the back of the moment, but Nikolai Jakobsen is already eyeing up Richie Worrell in second place, and Brady Gertz out front. Jakobsen's not going to give this one up. Looks like Steve Worrell's afternoon is run at the back of the back, but uh, Jakobsen just trying to find the right angle and find some drive here to get round Richie Worrell. Well, the dirt right out there on the fence. The riders riding out there on the fence. The only way to pass is to go round them. No doubt about Brady Kurtz out in front. Worrell done well to get into second place. And how the Rebels must be ruining that machine problem for Paul Stark last time out. Because they could have got a point out of this one. But here comes Jackson. Can he find a way through? Not quite. Well, so near, wasn't he, Nikolai Jakobsen, to give us a real grandstand finish. But it's the Somerset Rebels who give the Rebel Army finally something to cheer. They've won that eight, but it's the Rockets that have won the meeting at a canter and certainly shown everybody what they can do. But uh, great afternoon for Brady Kurtz as well. We said he will show you what he can do, and certainly the young Australian has done that this afternoon. Yeah, absolutely. Celebrating with a wheelie. Oh, they've put some great entertainment, both teams here this afternoon. The Rockets thoroughly deserve the victory. The Rebels will go out with nothing and they will feel perhaps a little bit hard done by, put a lot of work in for no reward. 49-41 the scores in favour of the home side. Well, with the Rockets winning this match by 50 to 42, not 49-41 uh, as I first announced. Of course, it was a black and white in it, 54 to 2. 
Good win, eight point win. Let's run through the individual match scores. To start with the Rebels, Brady Kurtz at number one scored 10. Lee Lanham, four and one bonus. Richie Worrell, eight and two bonus. Charles Wright, six and two. Josh Grishanik, he scored eight. Paul Stark, six and one. And Benji Compton, unfortunately, didn't record a point. Let's hope he's okay. For the victorious Rockets, for the victorious Rockets, Edward Kennett, 11 paid, 12 paid maximum from four starts. Right of replacement for Robin Askren. Uh, Anders Melgren, he scored six. Stephen Worrell, 11 paid, 13. Great performance from Stephen. What a guest he chose to be. Nikolai Jakobsen, he scored 11 and one bonus. Daniel Greenwood scored one from three. And Casper Luca, what a return to. Premier League Speedway for the Dane. 10 and 2 bonus. The Rockets are victorious by 50 points to 42. That's it from us all here. Now we'll be back in five days' time when the Scunthorpe Scorpions are in town for more Premier League action. We'll see you then. Good night.